guys hello everyone to yo. this saturday's yo, yo, yo. issue of review saturday review. Saturday issue this is your your issue don't forget to subscribe to our newsly week letter <laughs> i'm joking we don't have a week letter i was just a week letter a yeah we don't have a week letter <laughs> <laughs> our letters are just so weak <laughs> anyway sorry sorry about that weird opening <laughs> we weird should anyway. so, yeah um today we are reviewing never alone never alone we um, just recently finished the game. Did you think it was about never being alone? Come on, get started. <laughs> Which uh, is about... Oh, look, <laughs> you've just messed me up. Sorry, guys. Um, so, yeah, we, uh, we just recently finished this game. Uh, a couple of... Um, the, mm, yesterday? We played it on the channel, so check it out there if you want to see it. Yes, the, I don't think... Uh, by the time this review comes out, I think there'll still be about two parts left. So, um, yeah... You but this review, this, we're just going to say now, probably will contain some spoilers because we will be some We will try and keep them to a minimum. But hey ho, if you're looking at the game anyway uh, and it reviews for it, it means that you must not mind the spoilers as much because if it means you're not sure about the game, so you need that extra bit than not knowing. Indeed. So yes, let's get straight to it. <laughs> The story, it's basically, it's sort of an ancestral story, pass, well, passed on by ancestors by the Inupiaq people. I apologize because I know I've butchered your name. <laughs> and it, it's a story about their past and, like, about something that happened within their past, which. So the storyline it is ba well not based off of a true story but it's based well it could be you never know but it's sort of that's where it comes from and it's also in the language it is also titled Kisima Inichuna I apologize because again I probably butchered that but what that basically means is I am never alone and so this I feel the story kind of hints because you have a fox that runs around with you so that fox. It's sort of like, it's you and them. It sort of shows the bond between them and as they work together to complete, like, the mission that they're on and what they do. And they do have... Uh, there is the main antagonist, the man-killer, who comes. And so it sort of has that sort of good versus evil. But another part of the story which I find interesting is it gives you these little insights as you progress in the story. And these are optional. You don't have to watch them. But if you watch them, they give you a lot more information about the culture, a lot more information about what's going on, like about the culture, why they added things in. Like, for example, the man-killer himself, they explain him in much more detail. And you'll find out more that what he represents is sort of this being selfish and not thinking about your community, which is what this game, I feel, really pushes home, is that whole community. And, yeah, so the story I found was my probably my favourite point. It was a very strong part to the story, and especially because it focuses so much on that culture and on the community as a whole, and I felt like it really pushed the message that it wanted to very strongly. Yeah, so um, the girl and the fox... Are trying to figure out why um, the girls' village is being battered by uh, severe blizzards. Um, they go out, and of course, they find eventually find their way there. Um, but yeah, that's that's the main storyline um, with things like the man killer interwoven into that. <laughs> So presentation, I feel, is another really good point about Never Alone. Um, it has a really beautiful soundtrack. Um, it has quite um, sombering uh, piano pieces when, you know, uh, the scenes required to, and then it has a lot more like dramatic music when, let's say, you're fighting the man killer and so on and so forth. What I what I really liked also were the spirit designs. They were quite different, a lot of them. They were, you know, they had different colors. And you could see that some of them were designed to do specific things, like carry the, um, the, the, the player from one side to the other and so forth. But yeah, um, and the other thing also is throughout the story, they have this narrator. I don't think we ever find out his name, do we? It tells you in the extra insights. Okay, yeah, so it tells you in the extra insights. But yeah, he basically narrates the story that you're actually playing and I, I, I felt 
all in all, that added to the presentation because it made you feel like the, the story you're playing is really worth telling. Um, <laughs> one thing that we did run into a lot were a lot of visual glitches in the game. Um, a lot of the times our characters would either just drop off the screen, get stuck on objects sometimes, and you know that, that would uh, a lot of the time break the immersion of you feeling as though you're in this rich world with like very beautiful um, northern lights and you know spirits and all that. So uh, you know that, that did kind of hinder the game a little bit, I felt. Uh, well, for me, personally, the presentation was a mixed bag. It was, again, the soundtrack, yes, the soundtrack was very nice, it was very atmospheric, it definitely added to the experience, especially if you had headphones, it's great for headphone listeners, just to sit back and listen to it, because it's very much in the background, it never takes over, but it fits perfectly. The whole design itself, it, I enjoyed the designs, because... The characters, for example, they would have little cutscenes where it would explain the story and the narrator would speak over those parts. And you really felt like you were being told a story, which I think is really what they wanted to push. And you did feel like you were hearing a story from, say, maybe an elder from this place telling you it, letting you know about the history. And it was, I enjoyed that. The designs, the movements, even the background, the whole sort of... There wasn't too many colours, but there was a nice amount of colours added in. But I did find that even then, sometimes little stylized choices I found a bit frustrating, like the snow on the screen, which although didn't impede too much, it was still sort of there. I'll bring it up later in gameplay as well, because it affects... And sometimes... Because the, it was so the samey and structure, uh, sometimes it was a bit confusing on what to do or where to go, and everything was kind of sameish. But there are different levels, and the different levels each have their own thing to it, their own thing that makes them interesting. But I do, it is kind of hard to see some of the different things, and I feel like because of that, it, it sort of lost things, but so it sort of works, but it doesn't work at the same time. But overall, definitely good design. And the glitching definitely caused a lot of issues when the characters would glitch when they'd die and their arms would randomly flick out or you'd jump and you'd get caught in the wall and you couldn't move and then it would just freak out or you'd get stuck because you'd move and then some ice would touch you and your leg would get stuck. So that definitely brought it down a lot. So I'd definitely say it's very mixed about the presentation. It's both great but sadly let down by the glitching and some of the choices that were made. Alright, gameplay. This is sadly for me the part that let the game down the most because there are various things that I will go through. First one is controls. The controls are probably the most annoying part about it. Uh, I didn't play as the fox, so Ace will tell you about the fox. I played as the girl and we didn't Ace also played with the AI, so he can give you a bit more info on that. But me playing as the girl I found it very frustrating, the fact that, fair enough, you're a girl, you're meant to be slow, maybe a bit more than the fox, but I felt like it made me feel kind of annoyed that I wasn't really getting anywhere, that I wasn't really speeding up, and sometimes when you would click controls, like, or buttons, they wouldn't register properly, like, say, if you'd jump, but your character wouldn't jump, and that fall, and for some reason, the girl, whenever she jumped, seemed to not be able to make any of her jumps anyway, and would always have to then climb up, which I understand, but it was still very frustrating and it slowed down the gameplay a lot whereas a lot of ones especially these side these 2d side scrollers are a lot more faster paced and you can move a lot quicker this one took a much more slower pace and you have to be very patient which isn't always a bad thing it's good but it can be annoying especially when the game is glitching out like it was where you would jump and then you would get stuck and you'd have to wait for it to refix itself you'd have to wait for yourself to fling across the screen just for it to come back like and especially if it's not registering your controls, finally it does, you jump, you get stuck, then you have to go back and wait for the same thing, I made mean, it really annoying. And other just little stylized decisions like the wind, when the wind, and or the blizzard and the wind would come at you and it would slow you down and you would have to get down and like wait, which was fine. But it was just, it got to the point where it was annoying, especially because the wind would blow, but then it would come back. So say if you 
waited for the wind to stop and then you jumped. Sometimes it would just catch you that going the other way and that could be really annoying. Again, that took lots of patience. So that was a, it was an interesting stylized decision, but not one I can entirely say worked very well. And the whole role, you don't really feel like as the girl you have the bowler to throw, but that's very annoying as well. It doesn't go where you want it to go. The controls aren't very responsive in that way. And it can make parts that you think should be relatively easy a lot more harder and a lot more annoying. Well, that was uh, interesting uh, comments from the girl side. I played the fox, as April said, and um, I got a completely, well, I got a, a different experience, but kind of the same. Quickly, just before you start to add on to this, another issue we both had, though, was that we would get frustrated with each other for saying, why did your character randomly jump off the edge? Yeah. When it wouldn't, it would be the controls, just for some reason, chucking us off the edge. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, yeah, with me, I also struggled a little bit with the controls. Um, the the fox is in charge of moving the spirits so that the character can jump on them or hang on them, so on and so forth. And later on in the game, that actually, even in the beginning of the game, a lot of the time, as as the fox, you would move yourself to move the the spirits and you know that wasn't too bad but later on in the game when you have to actually press x to move the spirits that's when it kind of got a little bit more i would say yeah tedious and clunky because i would the player the the player would move very slowly moving the the spirits over and you know it just in general being the second player in this game at first was kind of fun and then eventually just got very tiring and boring um you know so that's that's a that's a minus from my side, and sometimes also as the fox, um, the fox was able to like run up walls and stuff. Sometimes when I would click for the you know for, for the for the fox to jump and start running on walls, sometimes it wouldn't detect it. So sometimes the detection areas were quite off. Like the um, polar bear scene. Yes, mm. yeah, the polar bear scene. Now I think that's part two or something, or yeah. part three. I can't remember in our playthrough, but yeah, you know that that would also happen quite a bit. Um, so yeah, I think really gameplay, um, it is where it kind of, you know, goes down a little bit. I mean, if you, for example, if you compare it to Limbo, they're kind of the same slow type of game. They're still the 2D scrollers, but Limbo controls were very tight, I, I felt. Yeah, no, even the, the slowness way, yeah, it was slow, worked but, yeah. in its favor. But, but the, the character moved in the way that you wanted him to, mm. and he responded the way you wanted to. He had some weight to him, but you could, you know, you knew that if you press this and you press it with this, uh, intensity he will move in this mm. in a specific way and it wasn't so frustrating like having to redo it yeah so uh, yeah so i would think yeah gameplay really is where uh, never alone suffered quite a bit dagyom iyuk kai kai ro shungenyon puk dak pao aza In this review, um, I think Never Alone had a very good story to tell. The the amount of detail that went into trying to create this this story and this universe, which you could research more into with these insights, and you know they, they added quite a bit of um, I would say a bit of a bit extra to to, to your experience of the game. Um, we didn't watch all of them, but we watched a few that helped us understand who the man killer was, or just what he was trying. to you know what that character was trying to represent um so the story i would definitely say is, is, you know it's good it's a, it's a good story that they were trying to tell but um yeah it does suffer in in some areas like gameplay and uh because of that i'm giving never alone a 6.5 yeah, and my final thoughts um i'm gonna rant a little bit more <laughs> 
Um, my <laughs> final thoughts are overall the story, like I said before, is incredible. The story is so great, especially the way they did it. Definitely gives you that cultural feel, and I I love everything cultural. I love all the different things, and it really immerses you into the story, and you really get involved. You really love the story. I fa- love the fact that your characters are silent. Your characters don't say anything. It's all controlled by the narrator. Little phrases that come up on the screen. The characters make very little sounds and noises, and I really like the whole way it's done. You really can see the story. You can feel it. You really feel immersed in it, and I loved that. But it is sadly so let down by the gameplay, and the presentation is so half and half. I liked the added touch of being able to play with two people, especially with it being called Never Alone. I did enjoy that. And so I thought that was really good being able to play with someone, but it felt a lot to me like Child of Light again with where you have the extra character because at first you sort of feel like both your characters were sort of were working in tandem, and although they are later on, it's still your role doesn't feel as big in the end as the second player, and it just sort of seems to lose that, which is a shame because I think it did it a lot better than Child of Light did it, but. However, it's so much more broken than Child of Light, and I just find in total the whole game to me just felt unplayable at points, and just felt really hard to play and just impossible to do. Which is a shame because the storyline is so good; it really carries it. And so I, I'm kind of torn between this one, so I don't want to give it a bad review. But at the same time, I just found I couldn't play it, and I found myself not enjoying playing it as much. So I'm going to be harsh and give it a four, which I know is low, but I would still recommend it if you can get past the frustration, if you're into cultural things. But if you're not into the storyline, if you're not into that, I would say definitely don't do it. Because for me personally, I would probably for people if I was just doing this for just people like me who love story, I would probably put it up to a five. But because for other people who the broader range of people, I can see a lot of people that if this was the first of this type of game they played, it putting them off. I can't really see it wanting to draw them in more. So that's why I have to be harsh and give it a four. But still, I would still give it a recommend. Try it. It's it's frustrating, but I would still say try it. And the price for it isn't too bad in my opinion. Yeah. So. That ends this review of Never Alone.、Um, hope you enjoyed our comments and our thoughts on the game. Like、uh, April said, we do recommend the game. Yeah, it's, it's frustrating because the thing is, we enjoyed it <laughs> yes, that much, it. but it, it frustrated us that much as well. <laughs> yeah, that mixture of good and bad, and it just tipped over to the bad a little bit too much for me. Yeah. So、um, yeah, hope you enjoyed this. Please leave a like or subscribe for more of our videos and more alerts when we do post our videos, which is pretty much every day. Yes.、Um, I think yeah, there's going to be more gameplays to come for for this game. I think two more videos and then that'll be that. Then, yeah, so if you want a little bit more look at how it is and how broken the controls are, you can watch <laughs> us raging with each other、yes. <laughs> as we play. Yeah. So with that said. Thank you for watching. See you in the next Thank video. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.